All right, welcome boils and ghouls to the very first episode of Pulp and Popcorn. Like this is mostly gonna be talking about historical documentaries. Like uh, I might talk about some movies, but if I do talk about movies, it's gonna be stuff like Roger Corman's 1994 Fantastic Four film. Because oftentimes they're special features or television things. So they're hard to hear about when they come out and harder to track down if you don't know when they first come out. In the spirit of all that, basically, I'm doing this series to try to make sure that you guys do know about that stuff. This very first episode is very near and dear to my heart. It's one of the very first comic book documentaries that I found. In this very first episode, we're gonna be talking about the 2004 made for TV documentary, Tales from the Crypt, From Comic Books to Television by Chip Selby. This, like I said, was originally a TV thing, but I've never seen it on television. And the way I found it, I think most people have seen it, if they have seen it, was as a special feature on the Tales from the Crypt season one, two disc DVD that came out in 2004. I loved the documentary when I had it on the DVD discs for Tales from the Crypt. Unfortunately, the disc got stolen from me. I didn't really feel like getting a whole new set of season one just to replace the, the documentary. So I started poking around online and lo and behold, I found out that there is this amazing two DVD set. I didn't really ask any questions. I just bought it. When I went through it, it is absolutely amazing. There is three hours of extended interviews, additional footage, just some awesome stuff. So let's talk about the movie a little bit first, then I'll talk about the special features, and then do a little review. It's not perfect, and I don't want you to be like, go in thinking that you're gonna get a 100% overview of all of this stuff in one hour, because this is an hour long documentary. So thanks to the wonders of modern technology, you should be seeing the cover of Tales from the Crypt, from comic books to television sometime soon. And this is their rundown on the back. This is what they have to say. They were the horror comics of the 1950s, and they served as inspiration for a generation of writers and filmmakers, including R.L. Stein, Joel Silver, John Carpenter, and George A. Romero. Tales from the Crypt, from comic books to television, tells the story of famed EC Comics publisher William H. Gaines and details the controversy which erupted a half century ago over his groundbreaking horror, crime, and science fiction comic books. Using hundreds of comic book images and numerous clips from films and television series, the program highlights the life, death, and rebirth of the most influential comic book company of all time. That is a hefty claim, but honestly, for a 55 minute film, originally when it aired on television, and if you watch it on the Tales from the Crypt season one DVD, it's like 45 minutes long. The two DVD set that you can get is like 55, 56 minutes long, better, because that's like, you know, one quarter of its runtime basically. So it doesn't 10 minutes, you're like, eh, but 10 minutes adds a lot. So. Chip really gets you emotionally invested in William Gaines right away. The emotional narrative of the entire thing is really successful. It's really fun. You're rooting for William Gaines the whole time. You want to see him succeed. You want to see good things happen, even though you know basically, you know, the end of the story. And it does a really good job of telling you how educational comics started, how that turned into entertaining comics and then basically the new trend how the juvenile delinquency hearings happened that killed them mad happened then they disappeared then russ cochran appears 
like these reprints happen and a whole new generation of people will find out about not only Tales from the Crypt, but all of the EC library and its lasting legacy, as well as the eight, obviously, the HBO television series. It's a great documentary. It's a little bit lopsided, but that's because of the emotional narrative that Chip is pushing for the entire movie. Chip is not like a prolific documentary maker or anything, but he has done like 50 episodes of Penn and Teller's bullshit. So he's got the one-sided narrative angle in your head as the guy writing it, as the guy directing it, you know what story you're trying to tell from what angle and you're pushing that. And he's very successful and it's really well done. I always wondered why. And then when I found out that he was the director of like a bunch of Penn and Teller episodes, I was like, all right, it's awesome. It's really well done. It's by somebody who you can tell is very well polished in that sense, especially knowing that it's a television documentary going into it. The special features, though, there isn't a uh, director's commentary. That's the one thing that sucks because I love it enough. I would like to hear what he has to say about the documentary. But beggars can't be choosers. And there's three, count them, three, baby, hours of bonus features all of it is awesome if you are an ec fan and you've not seen this stuff there will be someone from the stable interviewed or someone will say something where you're like oh shit, that was so cool and like this is oh that might not sound like a big deal to some of you guys but like this is such old historical stuff that you don't get to say that often you don't get to find new stuff there was not a lot of these people interviewed and talked to and filmed. So this is important. It's awesome because a lot of the special features are interviews. The only special feature on disc one is a like round table moderated discussion with Al Feldstein and Ray Bradbury talking about the amazing series of Ray Bradbury adaptations by EC Comics, which like they kind of bust Gaines balls about in the movie, as they should, for like the whole springboarding and like, they, it became a very successful and profitable relationship for both EC and Ray. It's a very cool discussion. And then disc two, packed with interviews. They talked to Jack Davis, Al Williamson, Al Feldstein, Mary Severin. There's another piece with Jack Kamen where he takes you back to his house, like his studio, and he shows you like some of the original EC art and he reacts to it and just talks about like when he was making it and looking back on it retrospectively. There's a really nice piece talking about the censorship of the notorious severed head EC cover where the guy is holding the woman's severed head with the axe and her body's on the floor. It's brought up like in the juvenile delinquency hearings, like William Gaines talks about it, uh, and that's in the documentary because it's really well done. You get to hear about like William Gaines kind of comes off like an asshole. It sounds like he's kind of callous about the subject, but that's because it's already been censored by EC. He did find the cover to be in bad taste, so he already messed with it and that's why he says if you were to show it's awesome it's important somebody taping this asking that question having that story on record is historically important to a lot of us this is buried on like a two disc set of a documentary that showed up on season one of the tales from the crypt DVD set that I'm pretty sure didn't get ported over for the Blu-ray. This needs to be more widely circulated and talked about, which is why I'm doing this video. This DVD set is so well done. These guys talk to so many people. They also talk to Russ Cochran and Robert Overstreet. It's not about the values. It's not about the collectability. It's about Gemstone Publications. Overstreet's publishers, they're the reason you can go out and still buy an issue of Tales from the Crypt, even though that came out in the 50s, now in 2019. And Russ Cochran is super important because he's the guy who kind of rediscovered the EC library. He made William Gaines aware of how important 
important historically how much people love this stuff how much they were invested they wanted to see this and the preservation and the representation of this stuff to a whole series of new generations not just like one but several and that is one of the major reasons that guy right there is one of the major reasons that ec stuck around he was a steward of ec and although he's just like a guy who basically like helps publish books and it might be boring to some people to somebody like me having that interview it's wonderfully put together three hours of additional footage an hour-long documentary that's like four hours that you can just like dive into comics history and if you're a super big aficionado like if you know like comics code history and ec comics history back and forward and the hour-long documentary maybe doesn't teach you anything new there's probably some cool photographs or um archival footage that you might not have seen somewhere it's really worth checking out the documentary is great obviously the special features are they're out of this world they're priceless worth the price of admission alone let's get into like the review section i guess a little bit i have a comics code authority tattoo on my chest as a guy who's that vested in things like yeah they miss stuff and it's a one-sided narrative angle that's pretty biased it's pushing the william gaines angle the ec thing now i'm not saying like i'm anti-ec william gaines because i'm totally not like i think william gaines was actually a really stand-up dude for the most part that's really not something you can say for a lot of those old publishers i think he was a fairly stand-up nice guy i think that there was a lot of really just amazing stuff artists and important shit that happened out of ec but i don't think it's as one-sided as they paint everything in fact for years i really was like i wish i could direct another version of this that is four hours long that has all of the interviews from all of these guys and then a bunch of new information and another documentary came out a few years back and i'm gonna do ish at like maybe i should just call them issues like it'd be easier for me because everything is an issue. In issue two of Pulp and Popcorn, I'm going to talk about what I consider to basically be the sister documentary to this. Diagram for Delinquents does an amazing job of basically coming from the opposite end of the spectrum and trying to humanize Frederick Wortham and the explain the juvenile delinquency hearings that were happening at the time like they go into more detail and obviously in that episode i'll tell you more about diagram for delinquents but if you watch this and you feel like eh, it's a little bit lopsided maybe i would like to learn more about this subject or like hear from anybody who wasn't like just totally a tale from crypt cheerleader i guess you don't have to be fanatical about the subject to provide me with good information diagram for delinquents does have a lot of really good interviews with guys who are historians who have unbiasedly and analytically or collegiately studied the comics code authority the censorship the people involved in the subject unfortunately i think it pushes the humanization angle of frederick wortham too hard because i can tell you what i'm recording an audiobook of seduction of the innocent and like that guy wasn't just dead wrong about some stuff i am legitimately starting to think he was insane he says some stuff at points where you're just like this can have no rational basis in reality for someone as intelligent as frederick wortham appeared to and represented himself to be i really think he was crazy and i'm not saying that i want to see a documentary that's like hey frederick wortham was a you know crazy lunatic and he should have been locked in. he wanted to make the world a better place he just didn't know how to do it I used to think he was a confused individual. At this point, I honestly believe he had a fundamentally irrational viewpoint of the world. And I'll, I'm will i gonna have a like series of videos that talks about Fred Wortham and all of this stuff. We'll get into that whole thing down the line. But if you watch this and you're like, that's a little bit biased, or like, I would like a little bit more info, definitely check out Diagram for Delinquents. It's a great companion piece. I don't think either one stands perfectly on their own. And I think that combined, they really do tell an, uh, a very all-encompassing tale 
of the EC era of comics, the juvenile delinquency hearings, and the birth of the Comics Code Authority. Out of the two, this is more polished. That's got more info. What do you want? I want a good documentary. So I'd say like, edit them together. Truly and honestly, watch them back to back. The special features, the guys who made this are so vested in this world and this mythos of these creators and the history. It's awesome and it's amazing. And I'm so glad that they were so passionate about it because it really shows the TLC is there. You cannot deny it. And it's nice to see somebody with access to all of this stuff putting it all out there man i hope you boils and ghouls enjoyed this inaugural episode of pulp and popcorn i had a blast i i i really hope you guys go out and check out this documentary it is amazing make sure you hit that like button smash the subscribe button ah, hulk smash thanks so much for tuning in and uh make sure to check out the very next issue of uh pulp and popcorn which will be a diagram for delinquents kind of the sister documentary to this one have a great day and as always shop locally support your local comic shop and keep reading comics <laughs>